Nova's Volleyball on News Channel Nebraska is presented by Liberty First Credit Union. Banking with purpose. Find out more at libertyfirstcu.com. It's volleyball night in Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska to be precise. Downtown Omaha, the CHI Health Center where tonight more than 9,000 expected to welcome back they're supernovas. They've been gone since February 18th. Hello, Kendall White and the supernovas. And hi again, folks. My name is John Baylor, and these are the two hottest teams in the Pro Volleyball Federation, Atlanta and Omaha. They're at the top of the standings. Both are 7-3. and three. Both have won three consecutive matches, and this has caught the attention of the volleyball world because tonight one of these teams will claim first place in the PBF. Let's talk to the Olympian about this one, Nancy Metcalf. What has distinguished these two teams? What makes them so strong so far in this first season? Well, I think so far they've both been playing really good volleyball, but both teams have some outstanding players that can take over a match when needed, that offensively have some firepower that maybe not every team has at these levels. And so it's been fun to watch as the league has been going, as each team is finding their rhythm and kind of finding their, their group of players who gels together. Let's look back at the last match for Omaha. It was on the road. They've played six of their last seven on the road, have won six of their last seven, and the most recent was last Saturday night in Orlando. It was a five-setter. Omaha claims its first five-set victory. They're now one and two in five-setters this year, 15 to six in the fifth. And leading the way was Brooke Nunnaville, who had 20 kills in that match, hit 313. And we can take a look at the numbers. Omaha out hit the Valkyries. More kills, more digs, more blocks, more aces, and more sets won, three to two, the final on Saturday night. Yeah, it was another exciting match, and I think Omaha showed some real grit to fight through the fifth set, to have to be able to hang on, and they dominated in the fifth, 15 to six, so I'm sure their coaching staff was real happy with how they ended up playing the match and just holding through all the way to the end. Now our dig of the match from the Supernovas win against the Orlando Valkyries Saturday night, presented by Roloff Construction. Well, Brooke Nunnabilla can do it all. She is a back row attacker, a front row attacker. She played libero in college, and she exhibits those skills right here as Allison Mayfield's attack is blocked back and a pancake beautifully done by Brooke Nunnabilla. It was a great play, and I think that just shows the grit and the hustle and the determination of a player like Nunnaviller to be ready to make that play. That's a tough play to make, and she had to react so quickly to get under that ball. The ref didn't even think she got it up, but they reviewed it and ended up ruling in Omaha's favor that she did get the ball up. Got it. There will be so much great defense here tonight. Every time you take in a Pro Volleyball Federation match, you just marvel at the defense they can play. Exhibit A right there, and Laura bird Kuhn loves that one, the interim head coach for Omaha. Now let's take a look at the electric play of the match from Saturday night Supernova win against Orlando. It's presented by Electrical Contractors. The electric play of the match is match point. Allison Mayfield, 12 kills off the bench. She was a huge catalyst in the win on Saturday. She had a great night for Omaha, and I think the team is excited because she's somebody that doesn't always get to contribute a lot in the matches, but she had a big night for them in Orlando, and it's great to see how balanced they can be when they need someone else to step up, and she was able to do that for them. So Atlanta is the opponent tonight, and there is so much firepower for the vibe. You think of Leah Edmond. I mean, she torched Omaha opening night on this floor, 27 kills that night, had 70 swings, but they've had a nice pickup of late. Opening night at Grand Rapids was opening night for Anna Lazareva, the great Moscow Russian right side player. 4.7 kills a set, Nancy. P put that into perspective. I don't think I am familiar with a player who's averaged 4.7 kills per set. Well, I think Anna's a great pickup for Atlanta. She's been playing really well for them, and they're asking a lot of her. I think she had close to 60 swings the night that was her first match with Atlanta. But she's a very high level, like world level player. Um, who has played internationally in really good leagues. She played in China most recently, and I'm sure she played well there and dominated, but it's exciting to get to see some of the top international players come back to the U.S. now and be contributing in this league. Two-time Olympian for the Russian Federation, and that's Lasareva. Now, what about for Omaha? She is the Pro Federation 
player of the week by virtue of those 20 kills at Orlando, and she hit 313. She just does it all. She's like, she's like a Swiss Army knife for Nebraska, for um, Omaha, Brooke Nunnaviller. Yes, Nunnaviller is another great player, and she's been a really good leader for the Omaha team, but I think part of what has earned her this award is her consistency. She doesn't have a great match and then a down match the next time out. She is good every time she steps on the court, so it's nice to see her getting recognized for an outstanding week. The top two teams in the league are here tonight. Both are seven and three. Both have won their last three matches and in two matches between the two, each squad has won one. Well, Atlanta is back in town in the big O, downtown Omaha. We'll have the Supernovas and the Vibe tonight. Cast day across the entire state and here in Omaha the sun sets in the west and inside CH Health Center the supernovas being introduced to more than 9,000 in this arena built 20 years ago capacity about 17,000 well together Franklin Sports and Pro Volleyball Federation are shaking up the world of volleyball Franklin is the provider of the real pro volleyball the exclusive ball of the Pro Volleyball Federation and the ultimate volleyball for our world-class professionals. You can get your Franklin Real Pro Volleyball today at franklinsports.com. Starting lineups for the Supernovas, and that's Christina Buchova. She will start in the middle, averages almost two kills per set. Joining her in the middle is Tori Dixon, the former Minnesota Gopher. She's averaging nearly two kills per set. Uh, Dixon goes 6-4. And Vuchkova goes 6-2. Starting setter tonight will be Sydney Hilly, the great Wisconsin Badger. Twisted her ankle, missed a couple matches, and now she'll start tonight. That was Kendall White, the great libero out of Penn State. She's a fourth-year pro. On the left side will be Betty De La Cruz and Brooke Nunnaville. There's the head coach, Laura bird Kuhn, interim head coach this year, former Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket when she was a great player 20 years ago. On the right side, Jess Shaven Landsman, how about for the vibe? There's their head coach, Todd Dagenet, all-time winningest coach at UCF Central Florida. Finished up last April 2023, got the job here. That's one of the great liberos in the game anywhere. Morgan Hens, the former Stanford Cardinal. Anna Lazarevo play on the right side. The center, she's won the job now, Marley Monserey, and it's all hers after a big trade. Their former starting center, Tori Dilfer Stringer, has been dealt to Columbus. More on that later. And Tom Dejeuner, the head coach, is leading the way for Atlanta tonight. 
on the left side, Leah Edmond. What a great star she is, four-time All-American at Kentucky, the all-time kill leader for the Wildcats. And Lekinor, member Mene, will also be on the left side. You got two great liberos, Nancy Metcalf. You have two elite setters, but all eyes are on this new setter, Marley Montserrat. She's played a fair amount. We didn't see her much, but she's taken over the former Florida Gator. She has, and she's been doing a nice job for this team. I think she's a great player. She has good instincts. She connects well with her hitters, so I expect to see some really good offensive power on both sides of the net tonight. Thursday night, Jess Shaven lands from the former Iowa State Cyclone. She'll play on the right side. She can attack from anywhere. There's Montserrat. It was Tori Dilfer, Stringer opening night for the Vibe. No longer Shelly Fanning, the former Baylor Bear. Betty De La Cruz for the Supernovas. She's known for her offense. De La Cruz's defense is so impressive. I think De La Cruz has been playing great defense this season, which has been fun to see. I don't think fans are necessarily used to the level of defense we're seeing in this league, not only from De La Cruz, but from all the players on the court. And it makes the offense a lot tougher to score, which makes it more incredible when they do. And Shaven Landsman serves. Perfect pass. Swing the middle by Fanning. One nothing. Atlanta pass set kill. That's a nice swing by Fanning. I like it that Atlanta goes directly to their middle, set the tone early. Shaven Landsman had a great touch on it, but just not quite able to get out and pop it up. Shelly Fanning finished in 2019 for the Baylor Bears. De La Cruz the pass. A setter dump for Nati Valentin Anderson. Forget about the pre-match word that Sidney Hilly was starting at setter. No, they're going back to Nati Valentin Anderson. What a piece. Yes, and she did that in some of the earlier matches as well. She likes to be active offensively to keep the block remembering her. Good pass by member Manny. Back row swing, Edmund, not this time. But none of them are from the back, no. Member Manny, a lot of long rounds this level. Such great defense. Ooh. And that set was too far to the outside. And Valentin Anderson says, my bad, my bad. In the old days, we'd say that was my fault. Now they say, my bad. 2-1, Atlanta. Yep, another good rally. We see some great defense again, and just a little miscommunication, dis disconnect between the setter and the middle. Laza Riva putting up astronomical numbers. And so we're tied at two. Troy Dixon, she has been the starter at middle all year. Chalice won by Atlanta. What happened there, Nancy? Atlanta just touched the ball second. They always say on joust, the person who touches it second typically wins. Um, and unfortunately, Omaha couldn't pop it up. But Coach Bird actually said she believes Betty is the top server for Omaha, but Tori Dixon is right up there with her. She's a strong server. And they're going to get a lot of overpasses because of how hard she's serving. Two service errors now for Atlanta. We're locked at three in what has become a battle of side outs. That's Lickator member Menning, former Missouri Tiger, and then spent her final year with the Pittsburgh Panthers. One of seven daughters. She has six sisters. Edmund can do it all. Great pass. This line. And a net violation against Omaha. So Magda Yalashiba gets the kill from a Washington State Cougar. 4 3 5. Yalashiba finished last fall for Washington State. Native. And the Czech Republic right side swing. Dela Cruz brought back. Gonna see that a lot. Lazariva, but how about the assist for Ilasheva? A middle coming in there and setting a nice two-hand set. Yes, typically internationally, middles are ready to step in and they can set a really nice ball. Lazariva does such a great job extending and hitting high on those back row attacks. It's tough to get in front of her on the block. David lands, but nearly lands it. No. Chalice and back to back held serves for Atlanta. They've doubled up Omaha 6 3. It's a nice play by Atlanta, just seeing where the ball is and finding a way to get it over the net. The last time these two faced each other four matches ago, ultimately Omaha swept that match. Somehow Atlanta's been swept twice this year, but. Early on in the match, Omaha fell far behind, so they're used to coming back against the Vibe. 
Yeah, I think any team in this league has enough offensive strength. They can pass well enough to stay in any match. You've always got to be ready to finish. One note that I noticed out of the last match against Atlanta for Omaha, they out blocked them 9-5 to five and out aced them 7-2. to two. So I think serving and blocking again is going to be a huge part of the night for them. Three service errors already for Atlanta. De La Cruz with the most aces for Omaha, not this time. Edmund tipping, block back. A shaven landsman. Leah Edmund, stop! <laughs> Just shaven landsman. Now, they only award one block tally for every scored block in the college game if two players get their hands on it, they each get credited for the block. Yes, that's something for fans that's going to be different when you're watching international or pro volleyball, is that blocking is much more specific. They're watching who actually touches the ball, and there's no such thing as a block assist. Either you blocked it, or the person next to you blocked it. And so the stats look a little bit different, and you might think they're not blocking as much, but they are actually blocking the same amount. They're just not crediting it twice. Four touches against Atlanta, and three straight for Omaha. Early in that rally, Legator member Mene for Atlanta, just sparkling defense. Keeping a rocket dig, alive and extending the point. Overpass, shot back, and a kill. For Steve of each goal, four in a row. And there's another tough serve from Betty De La Cruz. She put so much heat on the ball when she's serving it. It's great to see the front row ready because a lot of those passes are going to come back over. De La Cruz, 20 service aces for the year. What makes her serve so tough, Nancy? I think it's just her heavy arm. And typically, a jump server like that, if you can go after it and have good control over where you're hitting the ball, you can see a lot of success on it. Little shot by Leah Edmund. She got to, has her first skill, seven apiece, boy. Remember Mene shows you there another great pass by her. You want to play, you got to be able to pass the ball. Over. Yes, at every level. If you can't pass, you can't win. And so it's another demonstration um, on the pro court here, seeing these women and how much of a mastery of the game that they have. Well, she makes it look effortless. There's a great pass right there by Dela Cruz. Quick attack, it's Kova, over dig. Oh! Sparkling defense. It's Kova, stops. Shelly Fanning, Atlanta, back in front, 8-7. Another example of great defense on the Atlanta side that time, Edmund chasing it to the side of the court, just great hustle plays. We're gonna see a lot of great defensive plays here tonight. So much passion on the floor. One reason, they wanna win this championship. In middle of May, the, the championship team gets to split a million dollars. Yes, they do, that's a nice motivation. Guided by 14 play. Montserrat. The center serves, Dela Cruz good pass. And remember many, another great example. Solid defense. Edmund into the antenna. Last touch by the attacker, Point Omaha, 8-8. Eight, eight. Yep, that's a good swing by Edmund. It's a tough ball when it gets that wide and it's so high coming down so far out. She tried to get what she could, but it's just a tough ball to hit. Edmund, all-time kill leader at Kentucky, finished up in 19 after being awarded All-American status four straight years. Two years later, the Wildcats won the national championship. One year later, excuse me. Fanning the attack, it's Doug Brooke. Monteville drop back, and a great save by Tori Dixon. Excellent reaction by Tori Dixon to see that and realize that she could play it back very quickly and get the point. If you can watch in the serve receive, Lazariva is running all the way from left back around the back of the court to go hit on the opposite side. That's not ever seen in college volleyball. It's the first time I've ever mm. seen it. She gets it on the right side. And that's, that's how much they know she's a tough offensive weapon, and they want to get here where she's most effective. And Romani, another great take. Edmund delivers her second kill. Nine apiece. It's a nice high swing by Edmund. The last time these two teams met up, Laura Bird was really pleased with how their team blocked on Edmund. She felt like they took her out of her rhythm and, and eventually took her out of the match where she couldn't play the way she wanted to, and that was one of the biggest reasons she felt like they won. So Omaha's going to be pushing to try and take her out of that rhythm again tonight. Swept Atlanta four matches ago. Yeah, Edmund struggled that night after a tremendous opening night right here. And there's Todd Dagenet, your former coach, Nancy, years ago. Yes, I got to play for him with some of the national team stuff we did. We go back a long ways. I won't say how many years. <laughs> None of those stopped by Shelly Fanning. 
10 apiece. Nunnerville is 5'10", but she doesn't get stuffed a whole lot. She's crafty. That time they got her. They did get her, but she, you're right. She's very crafty. She's very good with her ball control and usually sees the block really well and is able to do something else with it to be ring successful. So veteran and experienced there. She looked in front before she took her swing. She took her time, saw where the opening was, and just tipped it right home. Yes, she sees the court very well. And we've got a challenge, 11-10. This is the Bolt 6 system. Folks, if you want to find something, get a Bolt 6 system. It's, it's 20 cameras, 22 cameras, 12 from above, 10 on the floor. Any attack that's within six inches of the line, we're going to get to see it in the arena. You'll get to see it, hopefully, on our NCN broadcast. And here we've got a challenge, a video challenge using that Bolt 6 system. What do you think, Nancy? What are they challenging here? I'm not sure because they may be challenging if she touched the net, but one thing that is different here than in the college game is if they want to challenge something that happens during the course of a rally, they have to challenge it before the rally ends. The only thing they can challenge after it's finished is the ultimate ending play, the motion that ended the rally. So I would have to think they're maybe challenging if she hit the net or came under the net or something. Meanwhile, right now, they're reviewing this video in Frisco, Texas. There's a command center there. Yes. Lots of, lots of video screens. I mean, it's, it's, it's like NASA. Yes, right, right. and they do all the live review of everything there, and they send the results back. Frisco, Texas is the home of the Scooters Coffee Frisco Bowl. Nice. For football, yes. The bowl game. College <laughs> yes, football, college bowl, football game. bowl game. Gotcha. Yes. So we have a little connection there. Scooters is an Omaha company, a local Nebraska company. Sponsoring the bowl game out of Frisco, which is where the command center is for the Pro Volleyball uh, Federation. Meanwhile, the chair official, usually these reviews take a lot less time. They average less than 45 seconds, so something's up. Yeah, they are so quick with these reviews, and part of that is because they have such a dedicated command center taking care of these every time they have a challenge. They are trying to keep the pace of the match moving, keep the rhythm going. They don't want to stop the match. Like, sometimes in college, they stop for minutes and minutes and minutes. They don't want that. That's the number one official. He's not calling home. He's, he's talking to the folks in Frisco right now. And the question is whether Brooke Nunnaville on the follow through touched the net. And apparently the answer is no. So another difference in the pro matches, you're going to see the head referee, the top referee on the same side as the benches. That is to put him closer to the head coaches. But that also means the head coaches are allowed to have short interactions with the head referee to question what they were calling or why they made a call they did. As you saw Todd Dalgene come up there and ask the referee for some clarification on what just happened. This communication and a block for Atlanta. Magda Yalosheva with her second block, 11 apiece. Deals. Kendall White grimaces after the four pass. And still, Della Cruz and Della Crush. And Omaha's up to 11. Such a great swing by Betty going high and deep, but that set by Nati Valentine Anderson was amazing. She had to push it over half the court away, and she said a perfect ball for Betty to swing at. Tori Dixon. Lashiva got a couple blocks and now a kill tied at 12. She's <laughs> having success for Atlanta right now in the front row. The Omaha Block's gonna have to find a way to deal with her. These two teams have pulled away. Columbus and Grand Rapids are at four and four in the standings. These two, seven and three apiece. And another block, Leah Edmond. Yalashiva helped her. 13 to 12 now, Atlanta. And Edmond got so far over the net there. We'd like to see Vuchkova turn that ball, either turn her off the line or cut it even sharper, but Edmund is pushing over onto the Omaha side of the net. That's a great block for him. Five service errors already for Atlanta. Member Mene with two of them. She is not happy. No, it's such a fine line because they know if they serve too easy, Omaha's just going to have a heyday with the free, easy passing balls. Um, so they're trying to serve tough, but it's such a fine line between too many errors and not serving too easy. And Nati Valentine Anderson returns the favor. Sometimes it can be contagious. It can be. 
serving errors can catch on. Here's Magi Yalashova, Czech Republic. That might have been a little long. Beautiful. That was a nice set by Nati again, a real quick set behind her, and Butskova does such a nice job getting up with a quick arm and a snap of her wrist. That ball bounced just past the 10-foot line. Christina Butskova joined the Supernovas after finishing up in China. She arrived about three weeks into the season. And the Menes. Block is... Carum is a carom out of bounds and point for Atlanta 15 14 closer than LA traffic top two teams in the Pro Volleyball Federation are right here in Omaha 15 14 in the first our day has dawned a new horizon is upon us inspired by the many who came before us together on a path to achieve something extraordinary. Do you hear the groundswell? We are at the forefront of a revolution. Empowered, inspired, together. We didn't get here alone. This is our responsibility. We are creating a new major league on the greatest stage volleyball has ever seen. Pro Volleyball Federation is real pro volleyball. Now is our time. Communities will come together. History will be made. We are one. Today, we are inspired. Today, the light shines on us. Today marks the beginning of the next chapter. And we're writing it together. Rally with us! These two elite squads in the Pro Barball Federation, both are seven and three. Opening night, remember that? That was so fun. Thursday night, January 24th. And, and uh, in that match, Allie Linehan, not playing tonight, got the first kill in the league's history. Three deuce games were won that night by Atlanta. They win the match in five, then four matches ago, about a month ago. And, uh, Omaha sweeps Atlanta, and here we go, neck and neck. Yes, they're, they're so evenly matched, and they both have outstanding foreign players who are coming in and just bringing the level of the volleyball up. So it's just so fun to watch. Here's Monserrat, former Gator, former UCLA Bruin. Right side swing by the former Cyclone. Jess Shaven lands, but not this time. Shelly Fanning delivers. Atlanta's going to the middles a lot, even in transition. They are, and I think they're using it more than I expected them to. Knowing how much they use Lazariva, I thought they'd be going to her more. I would tend to think that they're trying to establish the middle first so that when they go to her later, when they need the points, the, the team won't be expecting it quite as much. But the middles have been really successful, so I don't think they need to go away from it. Mama Miller to the donut. It lands. Back to a one-point contest in the first. Again, such a smart shot by Nana Miller, seeing that center of the court is open and just knowing that it's there. She's such a seasoned player. It then digs into pass. Now we remember Manet. Wow, she's solid at that. And lots of rebound over Doug. And Leah Edmund gets her third kill, 17-15, Atlanta. That's a nice reaction by Edmund. It's a great dig by Omaha, but the ball's coming back over, and Edmund just skied up there to go after that ball and control it inbounds, which was great to see. Grew up in Lexington, Kentucky, played for the hometown Wildcats. This is a conversation for league MVP to date. That was just 4.3 kills a set. None of the He's the week's league player of the week. 20 kills Saturday, looking for one there, no. Remember Mene, count it, 18-15 Atlanta. That's another great swing by Member Mene. She's so fun to watch. She's a shorter player compared to some of the other players on the court, but she jumps so high and she's so explosive. All short players rooting for Lekator Member Mene. 5'7". Played for Missouri for four years, one year for Pittsburgh, got him to the final four. Had a little help, but he was part of it, that's for sure. Not a villain, no. Remember Manet, ooh, miss hit. Omaha's within two. Miss hit, but that's another great rally. Both sides having some nice upset defense, really controlling the ball well. 
Um, Laura Bird talked about how Omaha has really been working on tips. They said we let too many tips fall early on, and we're really working on locking down on that so the tips that come over, we control those and we play them out. It off the digging out. 19, 16, and left. She gives them a whole nother level of energy. She does. When she comes in and gets a kill like that, it fires the whole team up. It gives them energy. Like you said, it gives them a spark. Five feet, eight inches tall, playing in a pro league. That's the seventh service error for Atlanta in this set. And Omaha's got 17 points. Nice pass. On to Ray. To the middle and a big block by Tori Dixon. Another one point ball game. That's a great block by Tori Dixon. To start taking over in the middle is going to be so important for Omaha. They've got to slow down the Atlanta middles to be able to take that facet away from them. They're establishing the middles and staying with the middles. Lasa Riva gets done by another middle. Tight joust. Free ball, great opportunity for the Novas to tie it. Back row. Mm. Just shooting the lands in. Somehow that stayed above the floor. Dela Cruz. No. Number Mene. Wow. <laughs> White. Great cover. Another incredible rally. You see so many good defensive plays. It's just amazing to watch both players, not just the libero, but all the players on both teams have really made some nice defensive plays to keep rallies going. Leah Edmond for Atlanta, overhead diving for a ball, falling back. I mean, it's incredible. There's such great defense at this level. And there's supposed to be 15 seconds between the end of a rally and the next serve, but Morgan Hen says, bring a towel out, bring a towel out. Both teams were gassed. Yes, they want to keep the pace going like we were talking about earlier. So they're trying to limit the time between serves. But as a player, sometimes after a rally like that, you need a minute. So you find a spot on the floor and tell them it's wet. Lasa Riva, and she's got an ace. First one for Atlanta tonight. Perfectly timed, 21-18-5. Timeout, Omaha. Atlanta, 21, Omaha, 18. We're in the first set. Thursday night volleyball here in the Big O, downtown Omaha. Pro Volleyball Federation is proud to share its first national nonprofit partner, Girl Talk. Girl Talk inspires all girls to be confident leaders through peer to peer mentoring. Pro Volleyball is proud to work with Girl Talk to add to their nearly 100 clubs across the nation and continue to help all girls define their leadership skills. Any girl interested in starting or joining a Girl Talk club can visit mygirltalk.org, mygirltalk.org. Volleyball, an exploding sport. More girls play volleyball than any other team sport. It's very popular and it's grown in popularity so much over the last, I don't know, decade, 15 years. It's so fun to see the interest in younger ages that people are wanting to play volleyball. Girls are wanting to become involved in it and that leads to opportunities like this where when they then become older and there are women who can join a professional team. So many families out here tonight. It's great to see. Everyone's smiling. It is, they've got a great family atmosphere here. They are able to get some club teams to come in and be involved, some school teams. It's fun to see. It's good to have the Novas back in town. They're gone for nearly a month. The Nomads have returned. Bad pass out of system. De La Cruz out of bounds. Four point Atlanta lead. It all starts with the pass. It does. And Lazariva on her first serve dropped a ball short in front of Betty De La Cruz. And that was when she got her ace. That last serve she just had, she drove her deep. So it'll be interesting to see if she tries to drop her short again now. She's trying to yo-yo her. This time, a perfect pass by Kendall White to slide Tori Dixon. No. La Sariva. Kendall White digging like an archaeologist back there. 
Beautiful pickup by Nanagoa. Dela Cruz needs it. Lasa Riva. Wow. Launching lasers. She is putting heat behind that ball, and Omaha's having a hard time handling it when she goes after the ball full strength. You can see Marley Monsere there just having fun, getting excited with her for that play. Some nice ups by Omaha earlier in the rally, but just couldn't handle the heat on the last ball. Lazariva, she's serving. Averages 4.7 kills a set, hitting about 300. Opening match for her against the Grand Rapids Rise, had 25 kills, hit 339. Nice pickup midseason. Dixon short arms it, delivers. I like it that Omaha's going back to their middle. I think helping them get going would be setting the middle. Help them get a rhythm in the middle that opens up things for their outsides a little bit down the road. Setter switch for Omaha. This happened on Saturday night. They started with Nati Valentin Anderson, and here comes Sydney Hillier set. Dixon can dig. Remember Mene out and missed everybody. Maybe. I think we're going to have a review here. That's what that buzzer's all about. When you played abroad, did they have buzzers when they're making challenges? This is they a, this didn't is have a... anything this technologically no. advanced when I was playing. <laughs> so. so in this system, and this is something for fans to know too, coaches can't look at a referee and say, I want a timeout. They have a tablet by their bench. If they want a timeout or a substitution Get or a challenge, tablet. for example, there's a button on the tablet they have to push. It has to be within a seven seconds of the rally ending to challenge it. Um, the substitutions have to be entered on the tablet, which number is coming in for which number is leaving. It's very technically advanced, but it means that referees are able to keep the match moving a lot smoother as well. Communication through tablets, the younger generation would approve. Yeah, the younger generation will be professionals at this. <laughs> that uh, looks like a touch or, or not. Let's Yep, point Atlanta, 24-19. It hits Christina Buchkova's fingertip. Nia Reed sneaks in there and shoots a kill. It's a great swing by Nia Reed. Coming in off the bench, sometimes it's hard to get warmed up and into the rhythm of the game quickly, but she, I felt like she did a really nice play on that ball because her tempo wasn't quite there, her rhythm wasn't quite right. She made a really nice shot, half speed, found an opening. Former Penn State great. It's her 10th kill of the year, has not played a lot. And we're done in the first as a kill for Manda Yalashiva. Gives the vibe a surprisingly large margin in this first set. They pulled away midway and were very much in control, 25 to 20. And the vibe had 16 kills, only nine for Omaha, both teams with four blocks, and reception. Omaha did a nice job on side outs, but it was not enough. All Atlanta in the first. From CHI Health Center in Omaha. Come back for set two.
25-20, Atlanta set number one. We got some changes, Nancy, in the Omaha lineup. Mia Reed starts this second set. The former Penn Stater coming off the injured ankle in the fall. She's looked great in practice of late. And then the setter, Sydney Hilly, will start the second set. Yeah, I think Omaha's just trying to do something to change up the rhythm of the match, go with a different setter. Sometimes that changes the tempo a little bit or the connection with hitters. Nia Reed getting a chance. It's fun to see her play. Laura Bird said she's been playing well in practice, but because of that injury, she was still fighting to get through. It hasn't been the consistency they wanted. So it'll be fun to see how she can do now that she's got her opportunity. There's Nia Reed, and Butch Koba gets the first point of the second set. Should Omaha prevail tonight, it will not be another sweep of Atlanta. One love, the vibe. Montserrat sets middle, Fanning delivers. We're tied at one. Middles have been connecting well with Montserrat all night for the team in red. They have, and that's something that the coaches and the staff from Atlanta told us that they felt like Marley Montserrat had a really good connection with their hitters, including their middles, that the hitters felt like they connected better with her, and so that's one of the main reasons she's starting. Another service error. That's the seventh of the night for Atlanta. I think part of the reason Atlanta is making so many errors is Omaha is one of the top receiving teams in the league right now. And so they know they've got to serve tough, and they're just overdoing it a little bit. Low set, fanning block. Corey Dixon runs up the wall, 3-1 Omaha. Why is Omaha serving Memamene? I guess maybe that's a... A better choice than Morgan Hentz, the great libero. Here we go again. Remember, Manny is receiving serve. Perfect pass. In theory, you serve the front row hitter to try and take them out of the hitting attack pattern, try and break up their rhythm going forward to attack. But you're right. And remember, Manny is doing a great job receiving for Atlanta, so that hasn't been causing her very much trouble so far. Lazariva, another kill. Dicks in the slide. Bring it up by Fanning, boy. Middles can do it all at this level. Remember, Mene, it's her second missed hit of the night. 4-2 Omaha. That ball was just set way too far outside the antenna. She could barely get to it. She didn't have any angles to hit. She was just trying to keep it over the net in play. That was a nice up by Fanning, but unfortunately, Montserrat ran so far forward, and then the set got pushed out too far as well. And La Cruz, 20 aces this year. Looking for her first tonight. Edmund, wow. Just long. I think we're about to go to the video tip. Just long. So far, they're not calling for a challenge, but Betty De La Cruz starting it off again with some heat on her serve. There you can see the replay from the system. It's out by inches. It's really close. 5-2 Omaha. Set two. Down one love. Lazariva out of bounds. 6-2. That's an unusual hitting error for Lazariva. She doesn't do that very often. But I think Omaha's block was set up very well in front of her. And most of the time tonight when she's been hitting, she's seen a seam in the block. So maybe she's thinking I have to do something different because the block is here waiting. Hitting 308. That means you're right, Nancy. She makes few errors. Tanya De La Cruz. Ace. First tonight, 21st of the season. 
the league leader in aces, and you can see why. She has such good control of the ball with her hand, and that's another thing Coach Bird was talking about. Not only does she have a heavy arm where she's hitting it hard, she can control the ball really well. So sometimes she'll turn her thumb down, or you call it wrist away. Sometimes she'll turn her pinky down. But that turns which way the ball is going when it gets to the passers. Zaruva out of bounds. She's got two attackers in this set. It's all Omaha thus far in the second. 8-2. At the drop of the first, and Betty Dela Cruz will be standing on the service line when we come right back. Her husband, her son from the Dominican Republic, arrived this week to be with her, and she's playing well, trying to get this match tied at one set apiece from Omaha. Fans are so excited. She's signed to join Atlanta Vibe. Tenth year as a pro, signed in July, activated February 14. She got in her home debut. That's a happy fan right there. Happy mom. Happy Omaha Supernova fans. Eight to two Omaha in the second set after dropping the first by five. Yes, pleased with how they came out, started the second set ready to go. They made some great plays to start off. Lazariva had some unusual errors for her. Leads to an Omaha advantage going in. Eddie Dela Cruz not happy despite having an ace in that sequence. Eight three. Great ones are rarely satisfied. Agreed. I've heard that some of the most competitive people, it's not that they love winning so much as they hate losing. <laughs> None of them are out of system kill. She's just smart. It's a she smart is. That was, that was such a smart shot to go off the block, take some speed off of it. Just a really veteran play. Number many, great pass. And then another error on the attack into the antenna. That's a third attack error already. 10-3 Omaha. Are they wearing her down a little bit by serving her constantly? I don't think so. I haven't seen her play a lot, but she doesn't strike me as a type of player who gets worn out. Atlanta's seeing a lot of errors, not only from her, but from other players as well this set. All supernovas in the second. Lazariva, her third attacker, and this set alone. That's what happens when we promote you pregame. We jinx you a little bit. 11 3. Apparently, we did jinx her, but uh, so many uncharacteristic errors for Atlanta. The Reed's got a kill. Not there, though. Villar, a workhorse, pushes that one just wide. We'll take a look on the replay. Yep. And the first official is on the side with the team, so it's better communication. They just get closer to each other. Remember, Mene, another service there to four. The team's eight, 11 four in the second. It's tough to win when you have that many service errors. I know Coach Dajane is not going to be pleased with how many errors Atlanta's having from the service line around. They have to give themselves a chance to score these points. Oh. And the arena has not played a lot. You think that lack of communication challenge is, is a product of that? It could be part of that. I saw before the set started, some of the players were talking to each other and kind of going over. Nunaviller was talking with Hilly about responsibilities on the tips. I think that that ball Neary just wasn't ready to cover the ball because that wasn't a difficult ball, and that's hard to let points like that go, knowing there are going to be hard-driven balls that you just can't dig up sometimes. Atlanta expected the local, miss the express. Brooke Nunaveller, reigning player of the week in the league. 
Showing her own firepower, going cross court sharp. If you enjoy service errors, you're loving this match so far, but only the fourth service error for Omaha. Eight already for Atlanta. Here's Monterey. Set a dump, attempts in the hill, he denied. Shelly Fanning in the middle. Yeah, really good awareness play by Shelly Fanning. That pass was just a little tight by Kendall White. Hilly, I think, had to dump it, but I think she could have picked a better option on dumping, gone behind her, tipped back over her shoulder instead of forward into where the block was waiting. Molly Monterey, that's service air number nine, 14 so Now, Monterey is one of many players in this league that has had beach experience. She played four years for Florida, then finished with two years outdoors for UCLA. I don't think that's any coincidence. No, I think a lot of the shots you see and a lot of the ball control you see is developed in the beach game. And that's something that, because the NCAA started having a beach season in the spring, more players are developing those plays and the ability to do those things. De La Cruz give the assist to Nunnaville. 15-7 Omaha. Again, great communication. Nunnaville called for the ball and Hilly was going. She would have had it, but she heard Nunnaville and backed off and let her take it. And a great set, great ball control by Nunnaville too. Good swing by Betty. They're not booing. That's crew. Morgan has a rare chance for her to show her passing skills. Yeah, if I'm Atlanta, I'm excited if they're going to serve Morgan Hentz because she is such a solid passer as well as a defensive player. That would be my last option if I'm Omaha trying to figure out who to serve. There's another great libero, Kendall White. We have two of the best in the business at that position ever. We do, and we do. And it's so fun to watch the level of defense be brought up so much by both of them. Hentz has had much of a chance. Omaha's attacking away from her, serving away from her. The admins. In. 15-9, the gap is just six. Edmund is so fun to watch. At 70 swings back in January 24th. Tori Dixon gets dug by Edmund. She can do it all. That's a nice deep shot by Lazariva. That's just a play Omaha has to make. Edmund is back there making amazing digs on defense and flying all over the court and getting these balls up. That was a great, smart play by Lazariva. None of Iller thought it was out and just let it go. Nice pass. Dela Cruz. Side out Omaha, 16-10. That's experience right there. She knows that the right side player is coming up the line, so that fast hard tip down the line is gonna be open because the middle back has to cover a lot of ground to pick that ball up. It's such a smart experience play by Betty. Betty De La Cruz on three moms, going on four for Omaha. Age 36, she's the oldest supernova. And Lazariva delivers her second kill of the set, 16-11. Again, another nice high corner, deep corner swing by Lazariva. Omaha's going to figure out crossing patterns on defense because she's hit that ball several times now. Omaha trying to run and hide. Atlanta keeps coming back. Tori Dixon, kaboom! Hilly's been having a good connection with Dixon. It's nice to see them connecting, getting that middle going again. They've got a pass to do it, but when they can set the middle, she's been pretty effective. 31-year-old. Dixon, from a great gopher. Alternate for the Olympics. Dick attack. Atlanta going back with Yalasheva and another great swing by middle. Both teams have middles that can terminate. They've got to get them a ball high enough in a good position to swing at, but both, both middles are terminating well. And they'll go to the middles even on a bad path. They will. Setters internationally are, I think, much better and much more developed at setting a middle, even if it's not a perfect pass, maybe pushing it from the 10 foot line up to where the middle can hit it. So it's fun to see because it gets the middles involved that much more often during the match. Good look at Anna Lasariva, Moscow, Russia. Tori Dixon, not this time. Or that. She wanted that so bad, but a great play by Yalasheva to just get over the net, see the overpass coming back, and get over and block Dixon trying to attack it back. Yalasheva had seven blocks in her last match. Just a four-point Omaha lead. 
Neil Reed gets one to make it five. Great swing by Nia Reed, tooling it off the block, out of bounds. Nobody can cover that. It's going out over the antenna. Nia Reed's an interesting story. I, I think if she were to play now, she would not have stayed at Penn State. Now, in the era of the portal, she didn't get a chance really until her junior year at Penn State, and then became a star. These days, you don't get to play early. You're usually looking for greener pastures. Kova with a kill. Back yeah. to back Omaha rallies. Uchkova and honestly both medals, they do a great job of getting up and being available. In, in rallies, they are back up ready to attack, so their setters know, they have confidence, that medal's gonna be there. I can set them no matter what the dig looks like. Timeout, Atlanta. Omaha by six late in the second, but trailing one set to love. Well, if you're anywhere near Omaha this Saturday night, come on over to the CHI Health Center. It's luck of the Novas night. The Omaha Supernovas next home match will be this Saturday, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. against the Orlando Valkyries. To celebrate St. Patrick's Day, it's themed as luck of the Novas night. So make sure to wear your green. Limited time luck of the Novas gear can be found at Lawler's, both in-store and online. So head to Lawler's in-store and online to wear your green. We got to remember to wear green on Saturday night, Nancy. Yes, we do. My kids are super excited. We're not even Irish, but they're super excited about St. Patrick's Day. We got some pink here tonight, though. One of the official colors of the Supernovas. I, love, I think that's very brave. It is a brave choice. Yes. I could not pull it off. I realized that about myself. Saturday night, the Novas are anticipating the largest pro crowd for volleyball in this country ever more than 11,500 we'll find out we'll find out Omaha has shown up for this team it's been fun to see the crowds they've been getting I believe they hold the top three attendance records already for the league and because it's the only league for volleyball they hold the, it's in the United States so it'll be fun to see the crowd show up again on Saturday the miss hit 2013 all I want there's some talk of calling this huge fan base Nova Nation I love it I love it you got to have a nickname Edmonds, decent pass, joust. And here's Yashiana Presley, the former 2019 National Player of the Year. When she played for Baylor, she gets her first swing tonight. It's 20 to 14. And that's a nice swing for Presley. She hasn't gotten as much playing time. She was actually signed by Omaha originally and then put on waivers, and Atlanta picked her up. Um, all the people in Omaha that we talked to said they loved having her here, and you know, it was hard to see her go. It was just a decision that was had to be made but it's fun to see her getting some playing time because she's another explosive, dynamic player. Leah Reed, no. Leah Edmond. Stop! And Vichkova calling for the crowd. She loves it, getting the crowd fired up and into it. She does such a good job of getting over. That's a huge block for Edmond to be hitting into. You can see how far over the net Vichkova is. It's, it's a wall. And that's part of what's going to help take Edmund out of this match for Omaha to get on Edmund like that. It's going to start to slow her down and get in her head. Hence, rare passing opportunity. It's perfect. Back row swing dug. Montserre set it up. No. Great second contact by Kimberley. And Cook Nunnabella delivers 22 14. And the crowd is showing their appreciation. Omaha had several plays in that rally where they had to communicate. Balls were kind of off kilter, not what we're used to seeing. And they communicated through them. And that's been really nice to see because there's been several times this match that hasn't happened. So it's good to see the communication picking back up. Lee right to Presley, pulls her setter off. Set back row. Lasseriva gets blocked. Again, who's checking? Who's, who's Kova with her second block of this set? It's 23-14. That's the Omaha block coming into play, and it's got to start with the serve. Nia Reed back to serve again. Down one, Love and Sets, trying to lock this thing up. Tie it one, and that's a nice. <laughs> Nia Reed is making an argument. Hey, let me play a lot more. Yep, I think she's definitely making the argument for playing time. That's a magical serving spot, though. That last three feet of the court is so tough as a passer because it's so close to in or out and you don't know, and if you can get the ball to drop that deep, it's hard for the passers to get behind it. Edmund McGill. You can see Morgan Hentz on that serve, cheating, trying to cover for Presley. She's trying to take more territory because the Supernova just won't serve her. 
Yes, and I think they're doing a great job not serving her, but some of the top liberos, like Kendall White, like Morgan Hintz, they're gonna do that. They're gonna tell passers, scoot over, I will help you because this is what I have to focus on. You have all the rest of the game that you've gotta keep doing too. From Miley Iapo serves, former BYU star. Takes the first by five. Omaha the second by ten. Special guest, former Husker and Supernova, Gina Van Cusick. Bososki, when we come right back, we're tied at one. We're going at least four tonight from downtown Omaha. Pro Collection Apparel today, available exclusively at renathletics.com and provolleyballshop.com. Tied and sets one apiece from Omaha. The best two in the league thus far this season. Atlanta and the Supernovas locked at one set each. Well, the Pro Volleyball Federation is proud to share its first national nonprofit partner, Girl Talk. Girl Talk inspires all girls to be confident leaders through peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. Pro Volleyball is proud to work with Girl Talk to add to their nearly 100 clubs across the nation and continue to help all girls define their leadership skills. Any girl interested in starting or joining a Girl Talk club can visit mygirltalk.org. Let's bring in former Husker heroine, 2012 her final season, Gina Mancuso Prososki. Great hey, to see you. Good nice to see, to see you. you. That's Nancy Metcalf, the Olympian. You got everybody's identity now. Gina, you made a big announcement earlier this week. Updates. You know, it was it was a little big, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, my husband and I are really excited to announce that we have a miracle baby on the way. So yeah, I'm pregnant. I'm 21 weeks today. And that's why you haven't been playing a whole lot, because we were not happy with some of the player personnel choices <laughs> with the, by the coaches until now. But now we understand. Yeah, it's a little bittersweet. I obviously wish I could have both of both both best of both worlds, but this is a little more exciting in my opinion. And. Your whole family, there, there are a lot of you. I mean, you, you, you walk around so Omaha, man, Cusos are all over the place. And uh, you, you said in your video you put out there that there are, you have 20 nieces and nephews already. That was three years ago. Three years ago, there was yeah, 20 we got of them. 23 now. 23. Yeah. Man, Cusos are making sure there are a lot of folks around <laughs> Omaha. And so that kind of made it even more important for you. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's a lot of, uh, it was a lot of uh, pressure put upon myself. And I think that was maybe part of the problem, but when we finally just relaxed, God did his thing, and we're gonna add to that number now. You now have a new role with the team. We're yes. not expecting you to come in there and play a role late in the match like you did 
opening night, but we're expecting you. Know, you tell us more. How are you contributing now? Yeah, I kind of just walk into the gym with my hands open and say, how can I help? Um, so really, I what I've enjoyed most is just having a different perspective watching the team from off the court. So I give a lot of feedback in practices. I take weird stats and tell them during practices. Um, and then, of course, during huddles, I try and input for especially the pin hitters because I am a pin. So I just try and uh, give them advice here and there. Um, so yeah. Now, there are already three moms playing on the team. Yes. And so you're going to be number four. Are, you're not thinking about retiring, are you? You're planning on coming back next <laughs> season? I don't have an answer for that quite yet. I feel like I can plan something and something, and it always changes. So I'm just taking it one day at a time right now, JB. You understand behind the scenes what this team is like. What is the chemistry truly like for the Omaha Supernovas? I really love this team and the fact that we're all genuinely friends. So I think that really helps as athletes and being a part of a team is it just builds relationships off the court, obviously, but even more trust on the court when you have that bond. And so I really love that um, we love each other, we support each other, and we trust each other a lot. You played for the Huskers, you played on a lot of pro teams. Is this something special at this level, at the pro level, that you're this close? Well, yeah, it's special enough the fact that we're here in the United States. I mean, we always had to go overseas, so of course it's special, especially for me being in my hometown um, and just seeing the level that the Pro Volleyball Federation has brought to this country is awesome. Gina Mancuso, Prasowski, Nancy Metcalf, and I'll be right back for set three. Retired in sets, one apiece from CHI Health Center, downtown Omaha. We're going at least four tonight. Our day has dawned. A new horizon is upon us. Inspired by the many who came before us, together on a path to achieve something extraordinary. Do you hear the groundswell? We are at the forefront of a revolution. Empowered, inspired, together. We didn't get here alone. This is our responsibility. We are creating a new major league on the greatest stage volleyball has ever seen. Pro Volleyball Federation is real pro volleyball. Now is our time. Communities will come together. History will be made. We are one. Today, we are inspired. Today, the light shines on us. Today marks the beginning of the next chapter. And we're writing it together. One apiece in Omaha, together Wren Athletics and Pro Volleyball Federation have a focus that extends beyond the game. We're growing the sport of volleyball, building community around the sport, and empowering our world-class female athletes with top-tier resources. All right, Nancy Metcalf, former U.S. Olympian. You're looking at the numbers, the stat sheet. What do you see? Well, I think... I'm not surprised because we've mentioned several times how both teams are trying to use their middles and keep them involved. And there's actually middles from each team are leading their teams right now in points scored. Uh, Rustina Vuchkova is leading Omaha's team. She has three blocks, which is so fun to see because she's been such a dominant force there. Uh, seven points total. And then for Atlanta, Shelly Fanning is leading their team with seven points right now. But both teams are also very balanced, which I'm also not surprised to see. That was something from the beginning of the season that Omaha's coaches have said they like the balance their team is showing. And on both sides of the court, there's a lot of balance right now, a lot of set distribution balance between different players. Supernova fans are feeling the comeback. We're tied 
one set each. Atlanta took the first. And now Omaha has tied it up. Set three, we come right back. Each of these two teams have won their last three matches against each other. They are one and one. A lot in the balance here tonight. More than 9,000 we anticipate will be the ultimate number in attendance in the 17,000 plus capacity CHI Health Center. Right on the riverbanks of the Missouri eastern edge of the state of Nebraska, Iowa, right across the water. And Brooke Nunneville, she has done it all, gotten the most attack attempts for Omaha. Begins his third set. Class Ariba, no. Leah Reed starts her second set tonight. Off the bench. And the Mene. Tip will not work, and none of it will try it herself. Monsere, what a great off. Ella Cruz. One nothing. Alma. So many marathon rallies tonight. Yes, another great rally with lots of great defensive ups. Even on that last play, there's touch, they're touching the ball. They just couldn't quite control it and get it up. But every player on the court is involved in these defensive plays, and it's just it leads to a lot of long rallies because it's such high level of volleyball. Morgan hits the target. Perfect pass, and Shelly Fanning delivers in the middle. What do you think is going on with the strategy for Omaha thus far? As they're suddenly starting to serve Morgan Hens, the great libero for Atlanta. I don't think that's on purpose. I'd like to say they're trying to serve a seam between her because I don't think you serve a, a libero that good on purpose. Um, and I think they're going to need to stay away from her if they want to continue to have success. One apiece now out of bounds from Christina Buchkova. Rare miss hit for the Bulgarian. And Omaha down two to one here in the third. Sydney Hilly alert nearly gets the put away. Now she'll set. Back throw Nunnaville. Not high enough. Three one Atlanta. I think Atlanta's made some nice adjustments right now on their block and on their defense. Earlier, Betty tried to go down the line with that long tip again, but Atlanta's middle back is ready for that now, and they're covering that ball. So Omaha will have to readjust what they're doing based on what Atlanta has already changed. Each team gets eight subs per set. That's it. That's why they have to keep playing. You don't see nearly as many substitutions each set as you do in the college game. Till the Cruz delivers. Sneaks that one through somehow, and it just dies right in front of the back row defense. But another great rally. She hits the ball off the block to keep the rally going, and someone covers her. They get to play it again. It's called recycling the ball. It gives her another shot at it. Hitting just 178 for the year, but she gets so many out-of-system swings. She's under duress so often when called upon. Attack. Great up by Nanavilla. Lashava, not this time. Monterey unable to connect with Magda. Elasha. And it's 3-3 suddenly in the third. 
And that ball was just too tight to that. Montserrat just doing everything she can. I think the ball would have gone over if she would have let it go. She was just doing everything she could to try and get a set. And unfortunately, the timing was off for their middle. Betty Dela Cruz, no. Net violation, I believe, against Dela Cruz. She's incredulous. It's 4 3 Atlanta set break. Not happy about that call. I think she might have hit the antenna going up and over because it looked from our angle like the antenna was jumping. Mia yeah, Reed from the back row. Count it. 4 4. And Sydney Hilly trying to keep Mia Reed involved as well, giving her a chance to show what she can do keeping her a part of the offense to keep the focus of the block split. Sydney Hilly has been in there at setter since late set one for Omaha. Yeah, Evans stop to ejection. First lead for Omaha since one well here in the third. And that's Tori Dixon's third block point tonight, but you can see she is all over this and waiting and ready. Happens so fast, you just have to guess. Dixon gets a free one. Six four. Great serve by Hilly to start that off. Serving aggressively gets Atlanta to overpass, and it's a great job by Dixon being ready for that ball and being able to turn it. Five of the last six rallies won by Omaha. Monster right to the back row and a kill. Lazariva. And Lazariva is getting it set way in front of the 10 foot line because she's such a good jumper. She's taking off and going to the ball where it becomes almost like an off the net front court attack. Ana Lazariva is a weapon anywhere. You can set her in the concourse. Oh, just long. Like it to remember Mene. Five service errors tonight. So close. And I actually thought from Kendall White's reaction that she thought it was in and was hoping they were going to call it out. It was that close. Dela Cruz has an ace tonight. League leading 21 for the season. And a kill for Magda Yelosevic. And it's seven to six on them. No libero in this rotation. For Atlanta, Nia Reed, kaboom! 8-6, Omaha are tied at one set of pace. And that's a great swing for Reed, knowing the libero's out. I don't know if she did it on purpose, but a lot of times teams will attack the left back when the libero's out because they realize the stronger defensive player isn't there at that point. Just in. Ana Lazariva. And a nice high, deep swing by Lazariva. She's doing a great job of keeping that ball high, going after the deep swings. Two-time Olympian. She's from Moscow, Russia. Averages 4.7 kills a set. Has not been utilized that frequently thus far. She can put it away anytime, anywhere. Leah Edmond. Right at the libero, so Kendall White keeps that one up. Lazar even not this time. With Nana Villar against a much taller blocker. Again, Nana Villar. Diving Dick Morgan heads. Out. No touch. Point over. It's Lazariva trying to go high and deep again. She just goes too high over the block. I think sometimes with a shorter blocker like Brooke Nunneviller, they're expecting the hands to come up higher than they do. So a ball that might be touched by a bigger blocker is just an out-of-bounds ball at that point. Mia Reed came in late set one, has never left. Had some impressive practices of late. Wow. <laughs> Edmund got on that ball so quickly. She stepped, we call the step closes, that last quick step of your approach. She stepped close so fast and just snapped it down inside the block. That's a really fast attack. It's hard to adjust to that on the block. That's geometry. Tough to keep that one off the floor. 
Yeah, they're tough angles when they hit it that far sharp. Donneville, what a vertical. Three ball back, great chance for Omaha. Up one for the moment. Donneville, no. Edmund ties this thing at nine apiece in the third. We're tied at one set each. I like it how aggressive Edmund has been staying. She's gotten blocked several times, but she's going up and swinging at those balls when she has a ball that she can hit hard. She's done a good job staying aggressive. Omaha's block was there. They've just got to press over. We're up in Lexington, Kentucky. So much talent in that area. In the sport of volleyball. Raza Reba, no. Mia Reed. Remember, Manny, to break the tie. Blocked. Point Omaha. But what makes her Stanovitskova such a solid blocker? I think she just has, first of all, she has really good timing. She's at the top of her block when the hitters are attacking, but she does a great job of pressing her hands over into the other side of the court, and that takes away so many angles for those hitters. You're right, those arms are so strong. Very strong. She's doing a great job blocking, just getting over the net and taking space. And Lazariva had to attack over her and still got it in. 10 10. She did. That was just a high snap. Lazariva took a lot of heat off of that ball, but it was well placed. It's such a smart shot. You can see her thinking about that Vuchkova block, and so avoiding it, she still kept it in. Lazariva. That's geometry. Sharp angle, right to left. And Atlanta back on top. That's a really sharp angle. That's going to be hard for any team to defend because it's head height at the right side front row player who's coming off the net. But it's too close to the net for the back row player. There's two teams at the top of the standings in the Pro Volleyball Federation. Just what we expected. And then member Mene gives Atlanta a two-point lead. That's a smart shot by member Mene. I know that's a play that Omaha said they've been working on picking those up, but unfortunately they let another tip fall. That gives the point to Atlanta. Boy, frenetic pace. They serve so quickly after the conclusion of the prior point. Number many for another? No. Not a Veller. Kaboom! Within one, 12 11 Atlanta. That's a nice play. It starts off with Omaha picking up a tip, covering that ball, and Nana Veller comes in and just sees the block, sees the open court so well. Do you miss it, Nancy, a little bit? Looks like they're having a lot of fun out there. I do. I do miss it. It is so much fun. And just being part of a team that's all working together is such a unique feeling, and I miss that. Uh, but I wouldn't trade my life for anything right now. I love my kids, and I love what I get to do every day with them. Leah Edmond bangs it off the block and down. You got two great weapons for Atlanta. Leah Edmond, 4.3 kills a set. And then Ana Lazariba. Defensively, it's just so tough to stop when you have two premier attackers. It is, because they're on opposite sides of the net half the time during the match. And so you've got to decide as a middle blocker a lot of times if they're in system and going fast, you've got to pick one. Tori Dixon on the slide. 14 to 12. Omaha with tied and sets one apiece. Sydney Hilly 2021 national champion for Wisconsin. Kelly Sheffield's first title. As the head coach of the Badgers. Back row swing, Lasariva, great up by Kendall White. Nana Villa, not this time. There's Morgan Hentz, three-time national champion at Stanford. Lasariva. Omar just does not have an answer. And you get the sense, like a fine wine, she's improving with time right now. She is. I think her rhythm is getting better, her connection, but she's been playing so well all match, and she says, I think she does such a great job of seeing the block. That time she hit it high off the hands of the block, and again, that's a ball that's almost impossible to defend because it goes so deep with a touch that you can't control. Attack and kill from Mia Reed. But she's been a catalyst off the bench, 14, 13 Atlanta. She has, Mia Reed's having a great match for Omaha. She's been able to make a difference coming in and changing things around and just giving them another facet to their game. She's done a great job with the opportunity she's gotten tonight. Now, when you go diagonal, you have so much more real estate to keep it in. Ooh, Bella Cruz. Service air, 15-13 vibe. They played four matches ago in Duluth, Georgia. Three love Omaha. It's one apiece here tonight. 15-13 in the third at Atlanta. In front of more than 9,000 plus. Come back for more set three.
Our day has dawned. A new horizon is upon us. Inspired by the many who came before us, together on a path to achieve something extraordinary. Do you hear the groundswell? We are at the forefront of a revolution. Empowered, inspired, together. We didn't get here alone. This is our responsibility. We are creating a new major league on the greatest stage volleyball has ever seen. Pro Volleyball Federation is real pro volleyball. Now is our time. Communities will come together. History will be made. We are one. Today, we are inspired. Today, the light shines on us. Today marks the beginning of the next chapter. And we're writing it together. Rally with us! Today at franklinsports.com. All right, a 10-point win for Omaha set two. Otherwise, this thing has been closer than newlyweds. Nancy Metcalf, 15-13 here in the third. As uh, it's just strength against strength. What what can differentiate Omaha right now? What needs to happen for Omaha to suddenly reclaim that lead? I think their serving can pick up and get better. I mean, they need to go on some runs serving because right now Atlanta's firepower offensively is just really, really strong. And so they've got to either slow them down or even get points serving uh, to be able to flip the script. But I think their hitters need to continue seeing the block and being smart and staying aggressive. Delacruz the pass, a collision there, okay. And a kill. I was watching Ken White and Dela Cruz. They jumped up, they're fine. Point Omaha, 15-14, Tori Dix on the point. I think Omaha has been doing a really solid job passing tonight. They've gotten their setters in a great setting position most, most of the time on serve receive. And if they can keep that up, that helps keep their offense rolling. Casey Evans checked in quickly. She's a former Georgia Bulldog star, playing close to home with Atlanta serving specialist. Checks out again. Now, Dixon trying to tie this thing. Fanny gets stopped. Guess who? Christina Butchkova. Little attitude after the block. Little attitude after the block. We're tied at 15. She's got a little European flair to her. She loves to get the crowd into it and get excited about it, get her teammates excited. She doesn't mind throwing a little attitude out there. If you block somebody like that, you get to throw a little attitude. And another kill for Lazariva Anna. Lazariva, that whip right arm makes it 16-15 Atlanta. Another high hands kill for Anna. She's seeing the block really well, I think. And that ball was down the line, so it's just out of reach for Betty. Betty's trying to go for it from middle back, but it's just out of reach. Marley Monserrat to serve. As Tori Dilfer Stringer was traded yesterday for two number one round draft picks from Columbus. And so Monserrat is going to be your center from here on for Atlanta, and that big block from Fanning gives Atlanta a two-point lead. Yeah, Fanning had a little attitude of her own there. It was a little bit of getting her back with Vichkova. Set was a little low, and Christina had a short on it. There's Monterey again. Nice pass, Kendall White. None of those skies out. No Om touch. Omaha's calling for the touch. And, and they are going to challenge it. We got the buzzer in there. I think that's a smart play because when all the players on the team are calling for it, you're pretty confident that somebody, or if not everybody, saw it or heard it. Time to bring out the old bolt six here and see if somebody's finger caught it. There's Laura Bird Kuhn, interim head coach. She took over when the team was one and one. They're now seven and three, so she's six and two, and most of those games are on the road. I mean, yep. these road warriors, they love playing away from here. I think they enjoy playing here, too. I think they love playing here with their crowd, but talking to Coach Bird earlier this week, she said she feels like her team dials in even just another level when they get on the road because they're playing against an unfriendly environment. Ooh, just touched the second finger. That was of... one fingertip. That's amazing they saw that. <laughs> That's why you got 22 cameras. It's not bolt five, it's bolt six. I mean, we need 22 cameras to get that degree of clarity. Wow. One point ball game. Nia Reed to tie this baby. 
Launches it. Edmund over past Jowis. Whistle. Back row attack against Montre. Retired at 17. And that started off with Nia Reed serving a tough ball. Edmund overpasses it. Montre tries to make a play on it, but just is unable to. Nia Reed making a huge argument for playing time. Has only been in nine sets before tonight. This is her third tonight. And the jinx is on. 18-17 Atlanta. Compliments are always risky. Wait till they leave the game to compliment them. Delic cruise the pass, none of it the tip, no. Great up by Fanny. Remember Mene, not this time. Again, Brooke Nunnaville are tipping. Good cover. Nia Reed gets another kill. Launching from the back right. Nice swing out of the back row for Nia Reed. I like it that she's being patient with the ball. She's waiting to see what's happening. She's doing a great job with what she's being given. In the college game, my memory is that Nia was primarily a front row attacker. I don't remember her digging like this, back row attacking like this. It just shows you that age 22, 23, when they finish the collegiate game, they're not close to their physical peak. Agreed. I read or heard somewhere that women reach their physical athletic peak at age 28 or 29. So most of these players that we see who only play in college, they don't even come close to reaching the best they could be because they never have the time to develop to that point. Service ace. 1918. Tossing out t-shirts. And I didn't jinx her. <laughs> I just said she made a service ace. Don't blame me on that one. 19 each. I have to report what's happening. Checking in is Allison Mayfield trying to give the team a lift as she did against Orlando Saturday night. 12 kills. Here's the first touch. And she's blocked. With a big block like Yella Shava, you've got to go tire with those tips because she can hang. It's like It feels like her hang time is twice as long as anyone else's. So a tip that normally goes just over the block and falls is into her hands. Slide off a bad pass. Wow. Block back, set her dump. No. Remember Mene. And that'll drop. Kendall White, I think, wisely decided, you know, I've still got many years to play. Let that one drop. A 21-19. That's a critical point for Atlanta. They have four to go to take a 2-1 lead here. For the moment, we're tied at one set each. But the middles have played such a big role in this match. They always do. But particularly tonight when they've getting so many swings and so many blocks. I mean, there are matches when passing is bad, when you're constantly setting outside or to the pins. The middles don't, don't, aren't featured quite so, so much. So it just shows the confidence they have and the talent we're witnessing in the middle. Right, I agree. And I think the middles are playing well for both teams. They're getting a lot of touches. They're able to be involved in a lot of different parts of the match. But I think middles on both sides have been doing a really nice job with blocking in particular, but also with attacking really well. 21-19. Well, it's an exciting time for volleyball and the Pro Volleyball Federation is proud to partner with USA Volleyball to grow the game and pave the way for the next generation of Olympians and Paralympians. With more than 400,000 members nationwide, USA Volleyball and its regional associations are dedicated to supporting the volleyball community. Whether you're looking for a place to play, competing for a national championship, or a fan getting ready to watch our US national teams at the Paris 2024 Olympic and Paralympic Games, you can learn more and become a member of USA Volleyball. Org. Three ball, great chance for Atlanta. They're already up two late in the third. Lasariva, not this time. She'll try again. Ana Lasariva, down 22-19. And I think they are using Allison Mayfield to try to get a bigger block in front of Lazariva because so far she's just been having so much success going over. But Kendall White that time cheated up the line on defense. And even with a block like Mayfield, I think Kendall has to start back on defense and then read the tip if she sees it and come up for it. But Lazariva is such a high swinging hitter that she can't just go forward automatically. Sydney Hilly chooses back right near Reed, gets another. Closes it to just two. Bounces it off the tape on the top of the net. And sometimes those are the best plays because they're harder to dig. Changes the direction of the ball. 
So interesting choice there. Paige Briggs comes in, serving specialist out of Western Kentucky. Had a couple big matches when Nunnaville was hurt earlier in the year. Nunnaville is in the back row with Mia Reed. And Mayfield's up front rather than Betty De La Cruz for Omaha. And another kill for Lazariba, 23 to 20. Boy, she's a side out machine. She is, and Omaha's been serving pretty tough. Some of these balls are coming over really low and they're dropping, but Atlanta's been handling them really well too. They're passing pretty well right now. She's in the back row, which you would think would provide a little respite for Omaha's defense, but she's a weapon from anyone. Yeah, she hasn't really slowed down her production when she goes to the back row so far tonight. Yeah, Reed hasn't either. This time, member Mene, no less. Five feet, eight inches tall gets in front of her. 24-20. And I think that's part of what's fun about this league is seeing players like Nunnaville and like member Mene being able to be successful even though they're shorter. I think that sends a great message to girls mm. in volleyball all across the country. You don't have to be six feet or six two or six four. You can be successful at 5'7 or 5'8 if you work hard. Grew up in St. Louis, has seven brothers and sisters. Look at our member Mene and Mayfield. Deals went to her right, not over yet. Atlanta still has some wood to chop. Nice sharp angle from Mayfield. That's a tough ball to hit. Former KU Jayhawk, Allison Mayfield, finished in 2011. Came back to play, made the team. Playing a key role. Lasariba, knockdown. We play on, set point chance. Number two for Atlanta, Lasariba. We're done in the third. Two sets to one, Atlanta. 25-21, vibe. Set three, come back for the fourth. Omaha won the second, Atlanta won the first and third. The vibe and Omaha, both seven and three atop the PBF standings.
because Atlanta has a big block. But keep turning it off and using the using the block, finding different shots, finding different ways to score, and then picking up the junk balls, not letting that kind of stuff fall for points that you shouldn't be getting to the other team. How about this? Allison Mayfield stays in there, former KU Jayhawk. There's Brooke Nunaviller. Those are your two outsides. No Betty De La Cruz as we start set four. And the white perfect pass, tip shot, it drops. Christina Buchkova got to win this set or we're done. Two sets, one for the moment, Atlanta. I like that tip by Buchkova. I'm not sure I would do it when you're one-on-one -on -one with a blocker because that, in theory, means there's two diggers waiting for the tip, but it falls. It's a great spot way on the sideline. Number Mene, no. Brooke Nunaville, great pancake by Montserrat. Uchkova, stuffed by member <laughs> She's only 5'8". What a leap, what a piece. She has such a great vertical jump. She gets up and over the net, even though she is only 5'7". Now, member Mene faced the Huskers here 60 miles down the road in Lincoln twice in her career. Memorably, Missouri in 2019 lost to the Huskers in the second round. And then the final four, she was a Pitt Panther. She lost to the Huskers in 2021. And there's a service ace by Shelly Fanning. 2-1 Atlanta. Fanning, former Baylor Bear, along with teammate Yassiana Presley, who played a little bit into set two. And a kill. Nia Reed from the back row. 2-2. How do you think Sydney Hilly has performed as the setter coming off the bench late set one? I think overall, Sydney's done a pretty nice job running the offense, mixing it up, going with hitters that are in rhythm and trying to find a way to score. Um, I'd like to see her get their middles a little bit higher. She's underset Tori Dixon a couple of times, and Ruchkova once or twice. Get their middles a little bit higher, but keep them involved, because I think the middles being involved helps Omaha be successful. You read again from that back right. No. Set it with the dig. Someone else has to do the setting, and Lasserina gets blocked. Allison Mayfield, 3-2, Omaha set four. Great job by Omaha just staying put on the block and being solid and in position, not falling, moving around, because Lazariva is trying to wipe, the ball's just too tight. Lazariva can't take a swing at it. She's trying to wipe it off the block, and they did a good job staying, not, not letting her use them. Member Mene, nice shot by Nunaville. Mayfield now swinging. Edmund blocked by Dixon, knocked down. Lazariva, kaboom. 3-3. Another really nice high swing by Lazariva. Started off, though, with the cover ball by Morgan Hentz. Some of these hitters are getting blocked, and there are forceful blocks back, and Morgan Hentz flying across the court to pick that ball up and cover it. Morgan Hentz, little libero, three titles. The one time Stanford didn't win it, it was 2017. What an upset that night in Kansas City by Florida. The final four. Oh, miscommunication there. 4-3 Atlanta. What happened? They both called for the ball and neither one backed off. That's the kind of play you can't give up at this level. You guys, when, when they've been playing together that long, they've got to know each other better, and one person has to just back off and say, yours, yours, yours. Been together since training camp in December. Dixon out of bounds. 5-3 vibe. They're 20 away. They're up two sets to one. And Omaha on the road. You can see there, it was so close. Mm. And that's a nice swing by Dixon. She just missed by inches. Well, Omaha, Omaha on the road, five and one at home, two and two. Another <laughs> Miller tipping. Back row, Leah Edman. And it's 6 3 Atlanta on the road here in Omaha's home court. Lazariva that time went after Mayfield with that short falling serve that dies in front of her. And it's the same serve she hit Betty De La Cruz with early in the match. I'd look for her to go deep down the line the next one. Lazariva serves, high pass, one choice, push it over by Sydney Hilly. Member Mane pounds it off the block, freed up by Nunaville. Big swing here, Allison Mayfield into the end, 10 a 7 3 Atlanta. Some nice ups on defense there, but just a tough way to lose another point, hitting a ball into the antenna. It was a little bit wide on the set, but I think she can make a better decision on that. Timeout, Laura Bird Kuhn. Omaha facing adversity in the fourth. Down two sets, one.
play continues again, and tonight's main event is Pro Volleyball. This is Pro Volleyball right here, a power swing. Thomas Ilara. Jose, back row brilliant. Kendall White and company need a quick turnaround right here. Omaha down four early in the fourth, down two sets one. There's your reigning player of the week in the Professional Volleyball Federation, Brooke Meneville. 20 kills Saturday night at Orlando. Hit 313, 18 digs. That's worthy of recognition, that's for sure. Yeah, she had a great night. And she's, like I said earlier, she's just been so consistent for this team. She plays well, and she plays even better. And so she's been a great leader for Omaha. It was nice to see her get recognized. I'd like to see them be able to utilize her more again tonight and help her see some more success. Back row again, Edmund, and that's a kill. Eight to three now. It looked possibly like a footfall. Back row attack touching the 10-foot line, but they got the old bolt six on it. And apparently no call. Eight three. And the bolt six will not actually call the football. The referee has to call that, and then the, the other team coach can challenge it if it's not called. But if you lose the challenge, you lose your opportunity to challenge. So it's a call that most coaches aren't going to make because they're so far away from it to know for sure if it was a football or not. It's a tough challenge to kind of live or die on. You get two challenges each set, and you keep them if you have a successful challenge. I'm not sure I've seen it. Uh, there are very few successful challenges with the bolt six. You know, Paige Briggs comes in, had a couple of huge matches earlier in the season when Mendeville was out, and they serve her right away. Okay pass, back row, Nia Reed, down. Nine for Atlanta. Now, why do you think Betty De La Cruz is watching so much suddenly? Honestly, I just think Coach Bird is just trying to find something else that works, just trying different things. Betty wasn't having a ton of success attacking, and I think she just wants to go with some other players and see if they can get a spark somewhere and get something going. And that's in. Another big kill by Yalasheva. And that's clearly in. Boy, this true rookie at Washington State, Yalasheva, is impressive. And his service ace, his member Mene, is going after Paige Briggs, who just came in. Cole's a cucumber, 11 4 Atlanta. Number Mene is going after Paige Briggs, but that was a tough serve. That ball was moving quickly. She's had several errors tonight, but she's not backing off. She's still going after it hard. No trouble for Kendall White on the pass. Nia Reed needs it. Can't buy it. Leah Edmond for Atlanta. Knocked down. Briggs. Atlanta leading by seven. Back row. Make it eight. Member Manet has started coming alive, and it's it's good to see her spark for Atlanta. In the third set, Lazareva had nine kills, so they relied heavily on her. She had 17 attempts. The next closest was Leah Edmond with nine. So I think Atlanta is trying to get back to mixing it up a little bit and not relying quite so heavily on Lazareva right now. Paige Briggs, Brooke Nunnabiller, and Kendall White assigned the task of passing this Lekatora. Member Mene serve, it's so tough to handle. That one might have been long. Briggs plays it, gets it back, swings, Doug. Member Mene, just, it's coming in waves right now at Omaha. It is, and that's another nice up by Morgan Hentz. I think Briggs took something off of that one because it wasn't quite in tempo for what she was expecting, and it's an easy up for Morgan Hentz, and they are right in system, rolling in tempo to Member Mene again out of the back row. Omaha's won six out of seven while being on the road. Six of those seven matches. Finally back home for the first time in nearly a month. Last year on February 18. And in a whole lot of hurt. Down by nine. Dixon make it 10. Leah Edmund feeling, feeling it 14 to four. It has been all Atlanta this set. Here you see Edmund get right up with Tori Dixon and go right over the net. She's all over that set before Dixon even swings on it. Trying to move Member Mene off the service line. 
Paige Briggs, rookie out of Western Kentucky, needed that one. That's one. 14 to 5. That's the start for Briggs, sneaking it through between the block. But she, she was really working hard to handle that serve because member Monet was putting heat on that ball coming at her. And Briggs doing a nice job of continuing to pop it up where someone else can play it. Also Reba. Mm. Finds it through the four hands, 15-5. Yep, that one just going high hands and straight up in the block, not knowing where it was until it comes down and lands. They're in front of her. They've just got to keep pressing over and not reaching up. Sometimes with a big hitter like Lazariva, when she's so high, it's tempting to try and reach higher to block her. But by doing that, you open yourself up to some touches that are not playable. Nana Villa to the front row gets dug. Lazariva, she's mortal. She is mortal, and she kind of smirks a little bit after that one. She says, I know, that was my ball, my bad. Good for Omaha, though, to see that she makes mistakes too sometimes. Atlanta next plays in five days at home against Orlando. Two nights from tonight, it's Wear Green Night, celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Omaha hosting Orlando, and there's a big block. That's a big block. That was none of are going up uh, with that middle with Fanning. But what I like about it is that that pass was real tight for Montserrat and none of stayed put. She didn't fall for the setter going up with the ball. Setter up Marley Montserrat. 16-7. Smart play by Montserrat. She gets another tight pass and she sees the block isn't going with her. It's a smart play. Typically, you delegate responsibility in the front row, so if the outside hitter is going with the middle blocker behind to block them, the middle blocker would then have the setter responsibility on a tight pass. High pass results in a misconnection with the middle. Point, Atlanta, 17 to seven. Miracle comeback needed right now as Sydney Hilly checks out. And tonight's starting setter, Nati Valentin Anderson's in there. Former Olympian herself, native of Puerto Rico. Valentin Anderson sets the right side. Tip across by Nia Reed. Quick attack, Shelly Fanning. And Omaha just seems out of sorts right now, 18-7. They do, and Fanning does a really great job there. Vuchkova's all over the net in front of her, but she turns it so sharply that Vuchkova couldn't even touch it. That's just a very smart attack by Fanning. Atlanta trying to win for the second time this season on this floor. Omaha's only lost three times to date this season. And Lazariva misses just one. 18-9. At 18 to 8. Atlanta. Lasariva just makes this a different Atlanta team. She is just. She does because she's such a consistent option for them. She, she does make mistakes sometimes, like we just saw, but overall, she is consistently such an offensive weapon for them that they can find her anywhere on the court and she can make something happen. Timeout, second and final timeout for Omaha here in the fourth set. Down two sets, one, and down 11. Late set four. Few discouraged fans have decided to head for the exits, but many still believe 19-8 Atlanta. Yep, we want the fans to believe. Every gym you're in, you always want your fans behind you. D Wade is here. D Wayne is here, getting the crowd fired up, trying nice. to keep them excited, keep them cheering on this team. It's a big hole for Omaha, but they're going to do their best to try to get back into it. Ren Athletics, the largest volleyball-only apparel company in the United States, is the official uniform and apparel partner of the Pro Volleyball Federation. From the custom-designed player uniforms, stylish off-court apparel, and an array of fan gear. Ren Athletics is the driving force behind it all. Gear up with the official Pro Collection apparel today. Available exclusively at renathletics.com. That's R-E-N athletics.com. And Pro Volleyball Shop.com. All right. 
This would be the moment. Down 19-8. Paige Briggs. There's Nia Reed. Kendall White trying to pass this serve. Jovin makes the nice pass. None of those swings and in the net. Atlanta, Shelly Fanning says, no, no, no. And then she makes a box or a rectangle screen shape with her hand, which I think is the universal signal in the Pro Volleyball Federation for let's go to the bolt six. Yes, it's asking for a challenge. And so she's trying to tell their coach, challenge it, challenge it. Then he turns around and tells the assistant sitting on the bench, push the button on the tablet, we want to challenge it. Then he also has to push a button on the tablet to explain what they're trying to challenge. And I'm not sure if they give every option on every challenge or if it's just because of that ball, for example, you can only touch or no touch challenge that. I don't know. And the chair official, I think she did touch it. She was adamant that she had not touched it. She was. And a lot of times I think players are so into the excitement of the match and the adrenaline is rushing that there are times they don't actually think they did something. And then the replay shows, yep, you actually did touch the net. And so she, I think that's what happened because I think she was as shocked as anybody else. Shelly Fanning just looked at the floor official and said, good job, good call. A kill for Member Mene. Boy, she has come alive. She has really heated up for Atlanta. She's done a nice job getting herself back into this match, and she's become much more effective now than she was early on in the match. Remember, she's taken over for Allie Linehan, who was the player of the week in the entire league the first week of the year. And boy, with Edmund and Lasariva already, you have to throw in Lekator member Mene with a hot hand, and uh, they got a lot of chance, a lot of options. Here's Yasi Presley just checking in for Atlanta. Just wanted to see if she gets a swing. Paige Briggs gets dug. There's Ana Lasariva banging it off of the smaller Paige Briggs block. It's all Atlanta, 21-9. to nine. That's a nice swing by Lazariva. She had to get to that ball a little bit quicker than she's used to, but she did a nice job getting to it quick and using her wrist to turn it off that block that's not pressed over. Paige Briggs pushes to the deep corner now. Presley, nice up by Nunnabilla. Three ball across, it's all Atlanta. 21 to nine in the fourth. Ana Lazariva. A clinic tonight offensively, 22-9. She has been, and I think the thing she's been doing the best right now that I'm impressed with is how she's moving her attacks around. She's hit several to the deep corner early on in the match, and Omaha made an adjustment, their middle back moved over to the deep corner, and now she's hitting them down the, what we would call the 5-6 seam between the left back and the middle. So on that last ball, Nunaviller was diving towards left back trying to get a touch on the ball. Lasariva is just doing a really nice job moving it around and changing up where she's hitting. Nana Villa pounding away from the back row, 22-10. Got some smaller players in the front court right now for Omaha trying to block these big Atlanta attackers. Grassley a miss hit, 22-11. Omaha's block was not there. That's a very unfortunate mistake from Pressy. They were not, I'm not sure if they faked out with the middle or what happened, but Nati was not there, so. There's Presley, she can jump out of the gym and Omaha setters 5'8 right in front of her. They're gonna go to La Riva and great up. Moonviller, no. Presley jumping over and pounding over the double block. 23-11. That's a great shot by Presley. Knowing she's got that shorter blocker there, she just hits right into her. Naughty was not pressed over the net at all on that block. And so when the ball hits into her, it's on the Omaha side of the net already. Briggs, the constant target. She's been decent. Passing, gets her first kill. 23-12. I really like the tempo there to Briggs. They were running Tori Dixon in front, and she held the middle long enough that Briggs had an open net to attack. Right there, Fanning double pumps with Tori Dixon, and so that gives Briggs an open net to hit on. That's a great tempo to run to her. Briggs had 14 kills and then eight kills back-to-back -back matches, the second, third match of the year. Been relegated to the bench since none of them came back thereafter. Presley, she's got two big kills late here. Atlanta's one away.
Yasiana Presley, National Player of the Year 2019, a legend from Baylor University. Rigs it again, the target, decent pass, back row swing, not a Baylor, no. Morgan Hens, what a job she's done keeping the floor clean, and a big block, oh no! Point Atlanta, that block landed just out of bounds. And a four set win for Atlanta, avenging the three set sweep suffered at the hands of Omaha four matches ago. Atlanta takes its second match, wins for the second time on the road in Omaha. And the Supernova's home record now drops to two and three, and it's Atlanta at the top of the standings at eight and three, and Omaha drops to seven and four. They will meet again. Stick around, we'll talk to the Supernova's head coach, Laura Bird Kuhn, we come right back. Our day has dawned. A new horizon is upon us. Inspired by the many who came before us, together on a path to achieve something extraordinary. Do you hear the groundswell? We are at the forefront of a revolution. Empowered, inspired, together. We didn't get here alone. This is our responsibility. We are creating a new major league on the greatest stage volleyball has ever seen. Pro Volleyball Federation is real pro volleyball. Now is our time. Communities will come together. History will be made. We are one. Today, we are inspired. Today, the light shines on us. Today marks the beginning of the next chapter, and we're writing it together. in her home debut. You gotta stay away from Omaha. You gotta you keep playing out That's here. Play on the road. What did I say? Welcome back. We're back at the CHI Center. That's the Olympian, Nancy Metcalf. My name's John Baylor. There are your new standings. Atlanta's the top, eight and three. Omaha drops to seven and four. Still well ahead of Columbus, Grand Rapids, then Orlando, Vegas, and San Diego as the Supernovas in two nights will welcome the Valkyries from Orlando in town. And there's a good look at Laura Bird Kuhn, head coach of Omaha, things are going really well after set two. Yeah, after set two, that one set. <laughs> what happened there in set three? Things, the very end they pulled away and then it was all Atlanta set four. Yeah, I mean, we, you talk about volleyball, it's a game of momentum and you have to manage that. Um, we tried some things, we tried to get some momentum going with new, new people on the pins out there. Nia had a great match. Uh, we, you know, you try to switch things up. You have off nights, but you have to figure out a way to turn things back on. And it's, it, whether it's grinding on defense or slowing their attackers down, I mean, we couldn't touch half of those balls from the right there. So it's management on both sides, defensively and offensively. We had to get one of them going, get ourselves back in it for momentum. You were trying to find the right combination. You were shopping the bench and yep. you brought in Allison Mayfield looking for some yep. Saturday night magic. We saw Saturday night, yeah. didn't quite happen. What was the issue with Betty De La Cruz? Was she fine or you just wanted to find different combinations? I think Betty was fine, but we wanted to try to get, we needed to get more offense going and I don't think she was scoring as much, but she was bringing other things on the court. So that's why we let her go back around and once she was going to go front row, I just wanted to get Mayf in there, see if she could light him up. Then we went to Paige, same thing. See if we could get a spark going. Because um, at that point, you have to get some type of momentum going. And we needed some offense to counteract their offense. Boy, they just have a lot of weapons. I mean, you need a Hubble telescope to find a weakness yeah. over there for they Atlanta. They played well. Atlanta's, Atlanta's a good team. We knew that was going to be a battle. I mean, all of us knew that. We've talked about it. 
And that's how it's going to be in this league, no matter who we're playing. But we knew it was going to be a battle tonight. What's job one, coach, to turn things around Saturday night against Orlando? We got to clean up the first contacts. We have to stay aggressive with our serving. And we have to we have to terminate. We have to put more balls away offensively. Thanks, Laura Bird Kuhn, head coach Thanks. of Omaha, as the Supernovas drop this one in four at the hands of the Atlanta Vibe. The Vibe now 2-0 on this floor. All right, Nancy, we just heard from the head coach. What are your thoughts here as you summarize this one? What needs to improve for the Novas and Nova Nation for Saturday night? Well, I agree with Coach Bird. I think that we were not getting the offensive production we needed. I think their block was touching balls in a more positive way more often than the Omaha block was. So when we would get block touches, they were out of bounds, off into the antenna, balls that couldn't be played up. Their block was touching a lot of balls that our hitters were attacking, and they were able to make the plays off of it. So I think if we can turn some of those touches around and get better production out of them, that will help the team. For the Olympian, Nancy. Metcalf for the head coach, Laura Bird Kuhn. I'm John Baylor. Thank you for joining us and our entire NCN staff tonight. Omaha falls at home in four. Six o'clock Saturday night. Wear green. We're celebrating St. Patrick's Day, trying to set a record for attendance as Omaha tries to start yet another winning streak. But it's Atlanta at the top of the standings, eight and three. Omaha drops to seven and four until Saturday night. Good night. <laughs>